Full time at Kenilworth Road, Luton Town 1, Liverpool 1. Luis Diaz rescues the Reds very late on from an embarrassing defeat to Luton Town. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. Hit the like button, subscribe if you're new and want to see more content like this. Both things will always be very much appreciated. We're getting into it though. 1 1, Luton Town, Liverpool. Brilliant point for Luton Town. They may feel a little bit hard done by, actually, that maybe they couldn't just hold on for a little bit while longer to get the three points and to obviously cause uh, Liverpool more. You need an embarrassment. But of all men to rescue Liverpool tonight, it was Luis Diaz. So much going on in his personal life, obviously with uh, his family and personal uh, matters, the kidnapping of his father, of course, in Colombia. He rose up tonight. He stood up when it mattered most. Incredible that he was playing, despite the fact that he's probably going to go through. He's going through so much in his personal life right now. Tonight, he stood up when everybody else faltered. Everybody else stuttered. Everybody else seemed to think that this game was over before a ball was even kicked. Everyone seemed to think that this was Luton. This was going to be a walk in the park. Well. It clearly and evidently wasn't. The setup from Jurgen Klopp was strange, to say the least. Simicat not playing over Joe Gomez. Joe Gomez was chosen as your starting left back. Simicat was on the bench. For me, wrong time to play that. When you come up against a team like Luton, you know that this is going to be a game in which Liverpool are going to dominate, they're going to hold possession, they're going to look to try and break down a stubborn and resolute Luton side that are going to sit behind the ball and they're just going to try and hit you on the counter-attack. They're going to try and be stubborn, resolute, they're going to try and frustrate you, they're going to try and use all of the time-wasting tactics at their disposal to obviously uh, counter Liverpool's threat, slow the game down, and you're choosing Joe Gomez over jo over Simicas. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not exactly Simicas's biggest fan. I still think there are flaws to his game. But he's more of an attacking threat than what Joe Gomez is. And particularly down that left-hand side where we needed it. We needed someone who, with a good left foot. He has got a decent left foot on him. Needed to try and unlock this uh, th uh, this uh, very stubborn defence. And to be fair, we did have our chances as well. I'm not going to blame Klopp for the entirety of, the of everything and the setup. We had plenty of chances. Darwin Nunes, he's been on a bit of a roll recently. He's been in a bit of form, bit of brilliant form. Scored a fantastic worldie of a goal midweek. Trying to take that form into this game by shooting from everywhere wasn't exactly what I was hoping that he would do. Especially when he hit the crossbar in the first half and missed a dozen chances after that, including one guilt edge chance in the second half from a couple of yards out. Open goal. Salah's misplaced header found him free at the back post. He skies it. Referee's flag did go up, but it didn't look offside on the replay. Now, if the goal had gone in, of course, maybe they would have found out Salah's toe may have been offside or something ridiculous like that. But it did pretty much look onside. So it did seem rather embarrassing for Darwin Nunes. He had a very poor game when it, came, when it comes to his finishing. <sighs> look, I love the guy. I do love the guy. And I know there's a quality player within him. And I think that he is better when he's not thinking about the chances he's taking rather than when he's got time to think about those kinds of chances. He'll score a worldie next week and we'll all forget about it probably. That's just the way that Nunes works. He'll miss an easy chance, but he'll score a worldie in the next game. That's just how this guy operates for whatever reason that I can't fully explain as of right now. Salah, shocking. I have an honest feeling that my Premier League fantasy football curse is real. I put Salah in this week. He, he did nothing. I've had him out for the past few games, trying to rotate, trying to work something to uh, try and catch up with some of the people that I'm in my league with. Nothing. Nothing happens when I put him in. When I put him out, though, oh, he's scoring and assisting left, right and centre, this guy. All of a sudden, nothing. 
unbelievable. Jota, absolutely nothing. The midfield, disjointed. Graven Birch was, great, was good. McAllister was okay. Soberslai, poorest game I've seen in a Liverpool shirt since he signed. Absolutely poor from him. Like I say, Trent, first off, looked lively, looked creative. Very little going for him in the second half. Just dreadful. Just dreadful from back to front. So poor. You wait your whole weekend. You see Arsenal drop points yesterday. You think you've got a great opportunity. You're against the Luton Town team that are, let's be honest, let's be real. Luton Town are going down this season. As much as I like an underdog story, it's not really going to happen for them, is it? I don't think. You're against the Luton Town team. Golden opportunity to get three points. Golden opportunity to take advantage of what Arsenal did yesterday, which was drop points to Newcastle, albeit in rather controversial circumstances, I grant you. But you still had the opportunity to take advantage of that. And we fail again. The attitude, the mentality, this sort of feeling that was sort of going into the game that we'd won before a ball was even kicked... Dreadful, embarrassing, abysmal. Simple as that. It was just all like that. And then the, lo the longer the game goes on, the more these chances are being missed, the more we're seemingly taking pop shots from distance. You just knew what was going to happen. You just knew what was going to happen. You just knew that all it took was one Luton Town breakaway. For them to get something. And to be fair. They did actually have a, a chance before they actually went on and scored. Alisson to the rescue. Saving from Calvin Morris I believe. They did scare us before. So we were warned. But yet. There we go again. Wasting an opportunity. Wasting plenty of chances. And then when they hit us on the counter attack. That's it. We're done. It's a, it, it, it's, it's a knockout blow. It's a knockout blow as soon as we get hit on the counter attack once. Like, like I say, I didn't think the setup was great. But I didn't think the attitude of the players was great either. And, you know, you get what you deserve. If you think you're going to walk in, have a walk in the park, like everyone says the Premier League, best league in the world, you don't know what to expect. Expect the unexpected. You shouldn't be, really be expecting the unexpected if you turn up and you have the right attitude for it and you're playing well and you're t not taking things for granted. And that's exactly what Liverpool did. Took it for granted. And like I say, one counter-attack hitters. Tahith Chong, of all people, like, could have been worse. It could have been Ross Barkley, to be fair. It could have been Ross Barkley. That would have been much worse. But of all players, a former Manchester United player in Tahith Chong goes and scores. Breakaway. Very good counter-attack, not taking anything away from Luton Town, not taking anything away from um, the performance, not taking anything away from the fact that they deserve something from the game. They clearly did because, you know, they were on it more than us. They were, they were very much on it more than what we were. Deserved something from the game. One counter-attack to Heath Chong of all people, apart from Russ Barkley. <laughs> Fires past Allison. Great counter-attack, great move. It, it is what it is. Um, we cannot, we can't blame, there's, there's no one to blame but ourselves on that one. And then, game goes on, Liverpool continue pressing for an equaliser. And right in the dying moments of the game, like I say, of all people, with everything going on in his life right now, man like Luis Diaz rose up, stepped up to the big occasion and rescued a point for Liverpool. It still doesn't save us being embarrassed. Because we shouldn't be drawing to these types of teams if we want to be ch title challengers or whatever the case may be this season. I still think title challengers may be a little bit far. I don't think we are quite there yet to win the league. Top four and, and cup competitions is what I believe we should be focusing on for this season. Next season may be a title challenge. But this is the reason why. Because this team isn't there yet. Mentally... On the balance of things, they are not there yet. And this was, again, proof of why they are not there yet. 
We had a couple of scares already this season in terms of not playing well and getting through games. Of course, there was a Tottenham game, which we all, which we all know about. We all know that, obviously, that Tottenham game was, um, was obviously dreadful uh, from a refereeing point of view. And that's what obviously cost us the game in that one. But the poor performances, the poor performance against Brighton, which we drew... We've also had a couple of uh, Chelsea one right at the beginning of the season. I think we've had like maybe one or two in there as well, but we managed to scrape through them types of games. Everton wasn't exactly amazing, but we managed to get the job done there. Tonight, just couldn't get the job done. In a scenario in which presented itself as being perfect. And to make it even worse as well, Tottenham and Chelsea play tomorrow. So... That's going to be a big game. It's going to be a big test for Tottenham on that one. If we were to really um, go, at the, go at Luton the way that we should have done, get the three points, we could have really put some pressure or more pressure on Tottenham tomorrow to go out and produce a result against their fierce rivals. And we failed to do that. We had, again, an, a, an amazing opportunity uh, to do so. From an Arsenal perspective, from a Tottenham perspective, even necessarily from a City perspective, because we know that we've been there before with City uh, clashing horns and going head to head with them. So we know. But again, we messed up. We failed. Dreadful performance. I'm so happy for Luis Diaz. I wish on the pitch wise it was under better circumstances in terms of what that goal would mean to him. I know it meant a lot to him already and I know that he's going through a hell of a lot and it's horrible to, to hear about. Um, I somewhat wish it was under better circumstances and wish he, it was like a winning goal or something along those lines. It would have really been incredible, uh, even more incredible than what it was. Um, and as horrible as what it is uh, uh, it, and what he's going through, to rise up like that the way that he did both metaphorically and physically, because let's face it, Harvey Elliott came on in that second half and produced a hell of a lot more than anyone else did in that team. So, or a lot of what the key players did in that team. So Harvey Elliott, for me, standout performer, and he only came on as a substitute. Diaz gets the plaudits for the goal, but Harvey Elliott was a very big creative output um, in that second half, in the second half of the second half that he obviously played. So big up to Harvey Elliott, big up to Luis Diaz, brilliant displays from both of them. Uh, and obviously for Diaz even more so under extremely difficult circumstances, I would imagine. But it doesn't take away, um, from a footballing point of view, it doesn't take away from the fact that Liverpool were embarrassing, Liverpool were poor. We go to Brentford next week. No, Alex, Alexis McAllister is going to be suspended for that game. Last game before the international break. Three points, definitely a must now that we drew this game. It's it's not great. It's really not great, especially because Brentford themselves are hitting a bit of form right now. And hey, if we're, if we're suspect on the counter-attack to a team like Luton, how are we going to feel when we're going to be suspect to a counter-attack from the likes of Brentford, who play counter-attacking football, who are extremely good at playing on the counter-attack, who have actually beaten us on a few occasions in the past because of how well they can execute a perfect counter-attack. I worry a little bit. I always have done this season in terms of the balance of the team. I'm hoping that our forward line sorts itself out soon because... It's all right going against Nottingham Forest and smashing them 3-0. It's in these tight games, in these tight games where I, I do kind of worry in these kinds of away atmospheres uh, that I worry that this team, and like I say, the away, the attacking side, I said time and time again, I have no problem with. But there has been a couple of games this season where I've seen that our attacking line isn't quite clicking. Our midfield isn't quite there. And I know our midfield isn't quite there because obviously we're missing a DM. We're missing a, a CDM and we obviously need to change that in January at the earliest. Whether that will happen or not remains to be seen. But, yeah, it, it, it's embarrassing. Fair play to Luton. Again, can't fault Luton. Br brilliant, big point for them. 
um, let down a little bit today by their supporters and what they were chanting. And obviously with the sky cameras picking that up and the audio picking that up, um, the, the, the club were let down a little bit by those fans that were singing uh, horrible songs towards the Liverpool fans and, and the Liverpool club as a whole. But apart from that, yeah, just uh, a very big point. Great point for Luton. They'll be annoyed with themselves that they couldn't hold on just a little while longer. But a big goal by Luis Diaz. Le Luis Diaz to the rescue. And like I say, the uh, it's massive for him. It's massive for him, given what he's been going through in recent times. So very much happy for Diaz. So happy uh, for him. Liverpool somewhat get away with it to a certain extent. Like I say, Darwin Nunes, pff, amount of chances that you missed today, man. Jesus Christ. Salah, extremely poor. <sighs> Roll on Brentford next week. Roll on Brentford next week because I know we've got, I think we've got a Europa League game coming up on Thursday, but that should, <laughs> I say should, that should be pretty much wrapped, wrapped up by now. I think one more win. And that is definitely wrapped up for us in terms of the Europa League and, and going through to the next round. So, saying that, like I say, bring that on. But next week, Jesus Christ, you better beat Brentford. We better beat Brentford. I swear to God. We, be we best beat Brentford. <laughs> I swear to God. Um, shocking. That's all I can say. Poor. Embarrassing. Not happy at all with a point. Um, not happy at all with uh, with the point, the performance, the way, the attitude, the way we went into the game, certain things that went on within the game, dreadful. But it is what it is, and this is why, as I say, one of the reasons why I don't necessarily think Liverpool are quite there yet in terms of title challenges and title winners at this moment in time and this at this stage. So. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. But like I said, I always say these are the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it, of this guy. I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of Liverpool and Luton drawing 1-1 at Kenilworth Road? We'd love to hear your thoughts, your comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it, uh, in the comments section down below. So do get involved down there. Otherwise, hit the like button on the way. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new or want to see more content like this. Both things are always and forever be greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been... Another Flash Talks video, another uh, instant match reaction. <sighs> Just feel a bit dejected, honestly, but after all that, it was a pretty, uh, pretty poor, pretty poor. Not great, not great. Shocking, bad, 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 very bad. Um, but yeah, roll on next week. Um, uh, talk to you guys in a bit. Take care, have a good rest of your night.